Okay, good evening. It's 6 p.m., May 25th, 2022. I'd like to open the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for this evening. Uh, I'd like to announce that this meeting is being televised live on local channel 18. So if we could all rise, we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Individual with liberty and justice for all. Okay, before we get started, does anybody have a public comment regarding anything not related to any agenda item tonight? If so, you can check in with Marianne and you can have three minutes to make your comment. One, two, three, nobody's saying anything. All right, we're going to move on. All right, I will ask for public comment on each hearing tonight at the end of that presentation. Okay, Bill Blaisdell and Ron Bonvie are absent tonight. So sitting on the first hearing will be our three regular board members, as well as, let's see, George and Bob. So Sharon, would you read the first new hearing, please? 174 Captain's Row. Owners John S. Kelly and Carol D. Kelly request a variance under 174-33, setbacks from wetlands, of the zoning bylaws to allow for the construction of an in-ground pool on property located in an R3 zoning district, map 96, parcel 30, Mashby, Mass. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, for the record, attorney Christopher Corain representing the applicants, John and Carol Kelly, uh, the owners of property located at 174 Captain's Row. Uh, also with me tonight is Mark Dibb from Cape and Islands Engineering, who can uh, certainly answer any questions regarding uh, the site resource areas. Uh, we have applied for variance relief from section 174.33, which is the 50-foot setback from wetlands. Uh, the applicants tonight are, are looking for relief for a modest size uh, in-ground pool uh, that will be to the rear of the property. Um, these, this project has already been approved by the Conservation Commission. Uh, again, it's a modest pool, and conservation has required a substantial amount of mitigation, uh, approximately 1,500 square feet. So uh, the, pool will, the pool and associated work will certainly be an improvement to the property. Uh, where the pool is proposed is uh, lawn area currently. And there is also uh, hardscape that is going that is already existing uh, closer to the Mashpee River than where the pool is going as well. Uh, the the home itself and all associated structures, basically this whole project, the existing structures are all within the 50 feet already. Um, it's a it's a unique lot in this fact that the shape is uh, narrower by the road than it is by the Mashpee River. And also we have topographical issues uh, considering all the various wetland resource areas. So we have Coastal Bank, we have Coastal Beach, uh, we have the river. Um, so I think that there is sufficient um, evidence for the board to uh, approve a variance in this particular case. I would also suggest that there would be no derogation from the intent of the bylaw one, because conservation's approved the project, and two, there's already substantial encroachment into the 50-foot buffer uh, already, and as I say, we're, we're just proposing a modest-sized pool. Um, the pool itself, I believe, is pretty much sited where it's in lawn area, but it's technically coastal bank, so the, the variance would be for, for zero feet. Because you're... So wouldn't you be getting a variance? For 50 feet, I guess, would be... How, how you want to say it. So, so you're looking for a variance of 50 feet? Correct. It, basically, it's in the, it's all, it sits on what is, what's considered the coastal bank, so which is a resource area. A 50 foot setback from what? Correct. And I said, it's all, it's all lawn area. You'll see that the, if you can see the line for coastal bank, it kind of intersects where the, where the pool is located. Okay, so the dark, Dotted line or the dark straight line? No, that's this 
it's a. Yeah. Yeah. There's a more of a light dash line that intersects the the coastal bank. So the whole. Right. Yeah. So as I say, the the whole the whole existing structures within that 50 foot for the for the most part, and, and again, there is other hardscape that exists already that's closer, you know, and is already within, you know, conservation's and conservation's already approved yeah, it. Doesn't need any other setbacks. No. no, no What's setback. the lot coverage? It's fine. It went from 14.6 to 16.2. Yeah, I don't really have any questions. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I said it at zero because thinking, well, it doesn't, you know, there's no distance between, but. Do we have any questions? No. Anybody? No. This is uh, very easy. <laughs> I, I like these ones. Okay. <laughs> Anybody in the audience have any questions or comments? All right, why don't we read in the. Sharon, okay. The Water Health has no comment. Conservation, 174 Captain's Row. Conservation has approved this project with the condition that all mitigation plantings must be installed and inspected by the conservation agent prior to the to a building permit sign off. Okay. Anything else before we make a motion? Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve 174 Captain Grove. I'm John F. Kelly, Carol D. Kelly, request the hearing under section 174 33. Setbacks from wetlands to the zoning bylaws to allow the construction of an in ground pool of property located in the non free zoning district, Map 96, House 30, Map 12, and Michigan. The board has determined that the applicant meets all the conditions of the hearing under Mass General Law 48, section 10. Site plans cleared for John S. and Carol D. Okay, Jim seconds. So let's do a roll call vote. Bob, how do you vote? Yes. And George? Yes. Jim? Yes. And Scott? Yes. And I vote yes. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. Very good. Thank you. All right. Let's not get confused. Is the setback amount zero or 50? Setback is 50. Yeah. yeah. I was good. That got me too. <laughs> okay. Good, I feel better. Don't get you confused. Right, have a good night. Stay care, Chris. See you Chris. Good seeing you. Okay. <clears throat> Sign the correct line. Yeah, I just crossed them out so we put a line through the names. See what I mean? Yeah, we're well,
All right, uh, let's see. On the next hearing, we're gonna have Charlie and Brad sit on this one. Sharon, would you read the next new hearing, please? Zero Country Club Lane. Owners Kenneth E. Marsters Prime Home requests a special permit under 174-51BC of the zoning bylaws to allow for the construction of a 55 square foot sign at the front entrance of the subdivision with lettering on both sides of the fence that reads Country Club Estates on property located in an R5 zoning district, map 59, parcel 39, Mashby, Mass. Hi, my name is uh, Ken Marsters. I'm the owner of Prime Homes. Um, our property, um, let me just try to give you a, an idea where it's located. If you've ever driven down Old Barnstable Road, and you all have, and you know the da very dangerous turn that's there, there's a subdivision, that's our subdivision. A subdivision that would never be approved today. Uh, for obvious reasons. The sight distance is terrible on the left. The sight distance is terrible on the right. Um, but it's a 1976 permit, so it was grandfathered in. So it, it allows us to put the road in there. It's a very dangerous road area. Um, every afternoon, the cops sit out there. They shouldn't because it's a road now, but they sit out there trying to deter traffic, and there's been multiple accidents over there. People come down, and they, they hit that area at high speeds, and they don't see there's a turn. I mean, in, at the very last minute, there's a turn. But I also find out the people that drive down that road turn down there fast anyways. It's, it's, it's very dangerous. Um, but um, we wanted to make it a very nice area, so we opened it up. It's a big mouth. It's a big area of the mouth of development. It's by far the largest in the town, bare none. It's 190 feet from one end, 100 and, um, 190 feet to the other end. So it's um, a double lane going in, and then there's two lanes going out. We um, have been working with the town to try to put in a third turn lane to help create it, to make it a little bit safer. I'm going on safety here. It has, it has something to do with the science, okay? So it would make it safer so there'd be a third turn in like they have at um, Southport. We have already met with uh, Rodney Collins, Wayne Taylor, DPW, uh, Catherine, uh, uh, Chief Carlin, uh, the retired uh, chief um, of the fire department, and also uh, the town planner. So it's a big do. They want us to see if we will fix it. And of course, we're willing to do that. But it's going to require some work on our part, some uh, work on the town part. And we're sort of working on that together right now. And I'm ready, willing, and able to do that. It's a 68 lot subdivision. Um, we already have 14 homes sold. So it's, I'm not here because I want my sign to sell me homes. I have no problem selling homes. I think, and you know, it's not going to last forever, but uh, you know, we build a nice product. Uh, the entryway is beautiful. Um, we went in front of design review, and um, we, um, we, you know, get, we got their approval. I tried to tell them we tried to do it tastefully. I, I think, oh, you have some type of a drawing, so you can, you can reference it a little bit. And I think people have probably already drove by and drove, driven by and seen it and said, where's the sign? Because <laughs> there should be a sign there. But we did a nice stone wall, we did flowers, we did trees, we did rocks, upgraded the um, air, front entryway to the uh, golf course. And keep in mind, for traffic reasons, that it, that is also the exit out of the golf course now. I'm saying that because it, it's gonna be a little bit trafficy with the golf course and the uh, people that are living in there. And, you know, old Barnstable, back when, you know, I used to sit up there, um, was an old, old road and didn't get much traffic. But back in the late 90s, early 2000s, we did a study. Uh, and, like we're always doing studies commissioned by the selectmen when I was on the board to see how could we change and fix the rotary. Well, guess what? That's never gonna happen, okay? But we tried back then. And one of the ways we did it back then was we came up with all of these signs it's, that go um, to the major roads into the rotary. We put the signs that directed them away from the rotary. You know, one of those signs is uh, if you're coming down Great Neck, I get my Souths and Norths mixed up all the time, South, and you take a right onto Lovell's Road, you'll see a big sign that says 2 Route 151, 2 Bourne, 2 Falmouth. We're trying to direct all that traffic off the rotary down into past my curvy little windy little road, which means we have a lot of traffic down there. The trucks down there during the day are, are incredible, the amount of traffic. So it's not a, it's not a 
It's a busy road. It's a busy road, and it's intended to be a busy road, but it's a very, very dangerous curve. Um, so, like I said, the mouth is big. We, uh, we were required to put a double. We have basically four lanes there, and we have a nice little island in the middle. And we built a, uh, about a 14-foot island that was our design, and we thought what would look nice, what would go to scale. So we came up with a sign that was 55 feet long, and I, I've, we've talked talk to John before because he was on the uh, design review. And it's, it's basically the same size as New Seabury sign, only because it just turned out to be that way. And I know that the, um, the you know, and that's why I'm here. I'm here for variance. I know it's a bigger sign than what the bylaw allows, and the bylaw allows a 20-foot sign. That rule was written in 1972, hasn't been changed since then. There are signs out there that are smaller than 20 feet squeak. And subdivisions, there are signs that are more than 20 square feet. There are signs that should have a one entry in, uh, one sign, but they have two entries in. So it's over the course of time, it's been a, it's sort of been a bylaw that, yeah, we paid attention to it, but it's been broken a few times. Um, and, and nothing that's not very tastefully done, in my, in my opinion. Um, so we wanted to make it to scale, and I, we wanted it that big for a couple of reasons. But for the reasons for the, um, Safety reasons. People, if they come down the road, if you see that sign, you'll know there's something there. You might just pull back a little bit, and you definitely will during the day. You'll pull back. You'll see the sign. Uh, it's not a big sign. It will be small from the back, but you'll see, you'll see a sign. Um, and at night, if we have that thing lit up, and then at night it's very dangerous. And at night, if we can light that one back, and that's why it's double sided because we got to come in this way, we come in that way. You'll be able to see it, and it will be lit up like a spaceship. So at least at night, it will be a little safer too. And that's an area now where we're going to be getting more um, uh, cars because now just this is the quite not the first year that the golf course is coming out of there. And like I said, we have some homeowners in, in, the, in the neighborhood right now. So our goal was to build an entryway that would make a little bit of a statement, would be a bet, aesthetically appeasing, and be very, very beautiful and a high quality sign, high quality maintenance, high quality flowers, the whole bit. Um, so um, it is, another thing too is we want to try to slow down that speed if we can, uh, so people will slow down a little bit. And, um, you know, we want it well lit. And um, we think that it, with the scale of the sign, with the, with the, uh, uh, with the hardscaping of the sign, that it's, a, it's the proper size. And, you know, I, I would just say to, I know what, when we were doing the design review, we got caught up in this new Seabury thing, new Seabury, new Seabury. And as a matter of fact, I changed my logo because my logo looked like there. So they called me up the next day and said, change your logo. I said, oops, sorry, I'll change the logo, you know? And I got a better logo, so that's okay. Um, Rob Mills called me, my good friend, the attorney, and said, you know, you don't want to fight with new Seabury. I said, no, I don't have his deep pockets as Carl Icahn. I'll, I'll pass on that, okay? Um, but, you know, just to put into scale, I, I have some pictures here, and it shows it. And, I, you know, I own property in New Seabury myself, so I'm there all, all the time. I have a place over in the cottage, and I go in and out of there, in and out of there, right? And that's a 55-foot sign. And the mouth of New Seabury is 90 feet. My mouth is... Uh, no, wait a minute. So let me get this. Yeah, it's 90 feet. Mine's 180 feet. So what I'm saying is this area is much larger, much more open than, than New Seabury. And when you drive through New Seabury, I don't think you say, ooh, that sign's out of whack. It's too big for this area. It, it fits in nicely. So, you know, I think my sign would fit in there nicely too. And I think that area calls for a, a larger sign. And the last thing I want to do is put a big sign up there that's going to look ugly. Big signs don't make me money. Big signs don't make me, I'm not a, doesn't get my ego. I just want the area to look very, very nice and very, very uh, professional. And so that's my spiel. Okay. I think another good point is that sign being larger. The sign was small because that is such a dangerous curve. You can find if you're looking for that, and it's a small sign. Someone has to slow down to be able to read it. I think it's traffic. Yeah. You know how many people come and say they can't find my neighborhood because they're looking for country club sign. I have a sign up there that says country club lane, yeah. but don't try to see where it is because you probably hit something on the way while you do that because yeah. it's so damn small. Because yeah, it's on the be corner of a 180, 90 foot mouth, which is about 90 feet away from the entry of the road. <laughs> so that makes sense. Yeah, the opening is huge. I just pulled out of it playing the Wednesday league there. 
Yeah. They just pulled out of there coming here. It is, it's, you did a really nice job that we have all the different lanes because you have one lane going this way, the lane going this way. You yeah. Coming in. Yeah. So, and it's the curvature is so bad, and I'm trying to get the town. Oh, but you know, you know, trying to get the corner. town to do something, right? I'm trying to get the deep W just to, just to, and I might even do it on the golf course property because they're not doing it. Just take some tree limbs down. Help me out a little bit because it's okay now, but when, they, when it comes with the trees, it's not okay now. It's, it's, it's not bad, but it's terrible when the trees come because you can't see anything. But that's why we're working with the town. There's tractor trailers and, and dump trucks coming down there constantly around that corner. And they're all Jake breaking around the corner. Yeah, you know, and it's funny when you're coming from the corner from 151, and so this entryway would be in your left. I just stood there one day, and everybody that was taking that right, their left-hand tire was on the other side of the road because it's so tight, that yeah. turn. But there's trucks coming both ways. I can't imagine how tight it is for them. It's, it's a, you know, here's a true story. Here's a true story. The other day, we went down there. We saw a kid in the woods. Well, what the hell is he doing? His motorcycle was in the woods. He got run off the woods. He rode off the road. He got run off the road, yeah, but he was okay. Well, that's good. You know? Well, I just came through there I, I, I on just my way here tonight, and a car coming towards me had both left-hand wheels across the double yellow. They do that all the time. And here's, here's something, too, I just noticed the other day. I'm coming down 151, and I want to take a left into my subdivision, so I put my left turn signal on. You can't, because you immediately turn right. So your left turn signal clicks off. So if you want to take a left turn into my subdivision, which is the scariest one, you have to hold down your because blinker. you're going right to take a left. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's it's right to go left. it is terrible. It is absolutely, you know, you pull out of there and you got to you got to fear for your life sometimes. And like I said, it's a crummy spot. But we are working with the town to see if the because we have to take some of their town land too and work with the DPW to build another road. So we're hoping to widen that road so you, down the future. So, so when you come down from 151, you'll be able to turn left before you make the corner. Exactly, the exactly, absolutely. That's what we're working with. Yeah. Yeah, and everybody that was on the town with me, when we had the who's who of the town that day. I, boy, I had a lot of salary in that room one day, let me tell you. Uh, they all agreed with us, with, with us that something needed to be done. Sharon, I think we have a comment from Evan. Yes. Can you read that? Okay, it is dated today. Except we're permitting or proposed as part of the de development for which a special permit has been issued by or is required from the planning board. Any new sign exceeding 20 square feet in any awning sign shall require a special permit from the Board of Appeals according to Article 6. This subdivision was originally pursuant of the Board of Appeals special permit from 1973. The subdivision was again reviewed and approved by the planning board in 2002, but is not subject to any new special permit by the planning board. As such, I believe it is appropriate in this case to have the Board of Appeals act as special permitting granting authority for the proposed sign. This is a tough intersection. In fact, there is a redesigned concept of this intersection that will be required in the final lot release. Given the tight turn on Old Barn Spoke, it is important that this sign be visible enough to communicate to motorists that there are cars entering and exiting this subdivision. I have no issue with the proposed sign these islands are quite large and the signs should be comparable in scale. I rec recommend approval assuming there are no line of sight issues creating, created for cars exiting the subdivision. Evan Lehrer, <clears throat> town planner. And there will not be any sign. The, the, the sign is much further set in versus coming out. So that's the last thing we want to do is to, to, you know, so disrupt the site issues. You the sign's going to be right. way behind you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anybody have any comments? I just, I just have a question. Um, in terms of what we're doing tonight, the size I have no problem with. I agree with everything you say. Thank you. Are we committing you to the design that we see tonight? And is the lighting for that sign included in, in what I don't you think need? the design of the sign is our, I think just That's the size a, just of the a, sign is the only Just the size, size of the sign. Is, no problem. But you know, but if you drive I, by, you'll see where I my, my you'll see where my lights go. Yeah. Those, those, those gray poles that are sticking out of the ground, they're gonna be light, they're gonna be lit up. No, so no, that you'll see them. My question. Yeah. Yeah, I think the only thing, well, we are, we are 
signing off is the sign. This is a special permit because it exceeds the um, yeah. the 20 mm -hmm. square feet. That's the size of so. this board yeah. as opposed to the planning board because I'm of uh, the reasons that put down. Which is so you, we're in the right place. But if we approved the size of the sign, he wants to change his logo. I don't think that's anything to do with us. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. No, no, oh, no. I just had a pro I just it was funny. I had a problem with my first logo. So I mean, that's you know. Yeah, I changed I mean, it. I it's no much. It's much prettier. It's, it's much better. It's it's awesome. I'm good. I think it's a real attractive sign. Yeah. yeah, you know what we're also doing but just to just further one thing. I'm putting if you drive down my street, Country Club Lane, you'll see poles. I'm putting street lights down there too, so the whole neighborhood will be built up even beyond the signs. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, otherwise it'd be a pretty dark road to drive now. Scary. <laughs> Scary. Uh, go ahead. I was uh, driving by there. The sign that you have up there is... That will be coming down. Yeah, it's very small. But it was parallel to the road. Yeah, that wasn't very bright of me, was it? And <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to move it. Right. Yeah. yeah, I realized that that's going to be changed. Is the new one also going to be parallel? No. Oh, okay. I think no. it's on the plan. You know, I, I couldn't see it from you. Yeah. Because, you know, I took my eye off and uh, I almost ended up in the country. You'd, yeah, I'd probably be yelling you out the next day if you did that. Yeah, that wasn't a very smart move on my part. Yeah. Sharon, would you read the comments, please? Um, neither, it's not in wetlands jurisdiction and Board of Health has no comment. There you go. Okay, any final questions? Anybody in the audience? Along with what you've proposed, would it be beneficial? Like New Seabury has, they give you <clears> a 500 feet heads up prior to approaching your, your property. Would that help? We um, also, you know what? That, 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 would, that, would be, that would be for the town to decide because it's town property, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. you know something? Here's something. When you're coming from 151 to my property, there's a dangerous curve sign there. Okay. Nobody sees it. Because when you're driving, you're, you're looking to the there, and there's a big yellow sign. Here again, don't look at it. You probably hit something. But yeah, I, I might. I'm going to put some. Because it's beneficial. I'm going to put something on some trees out there, maybe if I get permission, some reflectors, right. you know, yeah, or something. Not on a tree. We'll put it on a tree because then I'll be. I'll go to jail. I'll I'll put it on a, a pole or something. I don't want to touch a tree. There's that off the telephone <laughs> pole too. Yeah. That terrible telephone pole. That that telephone pole is right there, right as you pull out of our, our subdivision. Somebody's going to hit that someday. But there's there's one a little bit further up that's right on the edge of the pavement. Yep. Right as you come out. It's like that far. Yeah. Yeah. So don't anybody come down my neighborhood. It's very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a good sales pitch. Can you believe pitch. people are buying homes there? <laughs> no, that's not a good sales pitch at all. Thanks. <laughs> We'll right. make that part of my bike uh, ride. Oh, it's a beautiful bike ride. It's, people love to Thank walk you there. I'm putting in that end because I now, instead of just trying to hairpin around and fly up that hill, I now just. You can go to the right a little bit and have some yeah, breeway. Have some, yeah. I can breathe a little bit. Yeah, it's funny. You wouldn't believe how many people drive down there and they just stop and they park there and they get, and they get on their phones. So like, you can't park right there anymore, you know? But the cops park there all the time. All right. Anything can else before we make a motion? Brian, if you would. Sure. I would like to make a motion to approve Zero Country Club Lane. Owner Kenneth E. Marsters Prime Homes request a special permit under Section 174.51 B and C of the zoning bylaws to allow for construction of a 55 square foot sign at the front entrance of the subdivision with lettering on both sides of the fence that reads Country Club Estates. A property located in R5 Zoning District, Map 59, Parcel 39. Mass should be masked with the following conditions. The board has determined that the applicant meets all the conditions of a special permit under Mass General Law 40A, Section 9. Front entrance plan date 12 29 20, provided by Prime Homes in Realty, Sheet P2, Country Club Estates, front entrance design, Mass should be masked, note plan not to scale, and conditioned on all town department comments read into the record. We have a second. second. Okay, Jim seconds, so we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Brad, how do you vote? Yes. Charlie? Yes. And Jim? Yes. Scott? Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you very much. Thank you it's much. been 27 years since I've been to a zoning meeting. You should come more often. Uh, I was exciting. on the zoning board 27 years ago, before half you guys oh. weren't even born. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Have a good, good one. Thank you. I don't know, I don't know about that one. Okay. <laughs> I think it's the other way around. <laughs> okay. Let's see. All right. <laughs>
other business. Sharon, would you read other business? I'd like to make a motion. I move that we approve the meeting minutes of May 11th, 2022. Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, we're going to pause for a second. We do have to sign off on that special permit. Before we go any further, let's take care of this business. You did a nice business. job putting that road in and the way they did the entrance and everything. You did a nice job. Yeah. That is not a good sales pitch. Take your life in your own hands entering your neighborhood. Because if two cars meet on that curb, one of them's over the double line. Well, the trucks cut through there all the time. It's way easier. Check, to check, uh, check. Oh. Approve. And it's, uh, it's a terrible road. It's a horrible road. All the all they dump trucks cut through that way. They don't want to go through the road. They use they, the, all they want. They have them use all the old ones. I use them. They're coming danger. They give us a Charlie. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. One for the last couple of weeks. Where you, you, at the traffic lights on Great Neck Road North. It's a beautiful road. Take a right road. Beautiful road. property. Oh. Great homes, beautiful homes. Reasonably priced, you know, relatively speaking. A little bit further. Oh, yeah, home run with the timing. All right, set of lights. Is it set of lights? Oh, nice job. Okay, there you go. Great neck blows. Okay, before we close the meeting, uh -oh. we're going to reorganize at the yeah. next Great meeting. Yeah. So. Right. You learn this way about it. Just so places. everyone knows. Why is only four check marks? Take a right at those lights. Because uh, Charlie, did you vote yes, Charlie? Yes. Okay, we're gonna put we're gonna check. a oh, check I mark. I didn't check anything. I don't like sharp. Sorry, I'm okay. not dotting your eyes and crushing it. God, God catches it. Now I know what you mean. Yeah. Way to go. Oh, Scott, Scott. Well, Scott. Well, my, my, four, not my fault. Right, I only saw four check marks and went, uh, someone didn't sign. Did I? Not my fault. No, you not this time. Not this time. You can see everything now, Jim. I can. Yes, sure. forever. Wait till I get the other eye done. Got both eyes on you, Jim. Oh. <laughs> I'll be in trouble. Can I do it? John, how's, how's Bill? We're good. His wife's got COVID, so that's why he's not here. Yeah. She's had it for a little while. She doing okay? She like sick, sick? Or yeah, no, just... she's fine. It appears to be. Right. So, Sharon, uh, let's see. Why don't we make somebody new here that hasn't made the motion to Sharon? Would you like to make a motion to close the meeting? You no. never close the meeting. No, I thought. I'd like to make a motion to close tonight's meeting. Second. Second. Adjourn. Adjourn. Have a second. Jim seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night. Good work, everybody.